me get a couple of things out here. It's been a few days since I came live. That's okay. We had Good Friday and then we had Easter Sunday. So I kind of took that break to to celebrate that weekend. Hope everybody had a good a good weekend and you do celebrate Easter and all of those things. I know it was a little different considering that, you know, this is probably the first year that I actually didn't go to church on Easter, Easter Sunday. Let me just turn off everything that needs to be turned off here so we have no interruptions. Okay, this is a kind of a weird Easter Sunday. I'm sure it was for everyone. But my church did do a live stream, so that was nice. And then I managed to watch a couple other church uh, churches that, that did their live stream on Easter Sunday as well. And that was, that was really neat. So even though we didn't get a chance to go to church, we actually, you know, we could have visited quite a few just by using the technology that we have, right? I'm just getting out some of these, um, this Play-Doh that I made. I didn't announce that I was coming on because I wasn't sure what time I was coming today. But I'm here. All right, so what we're going to, what I'm going to talk about today is how to make your own Play-Doh and uh, different ways that you can work with it, okay? And I have a, a few that I made with my nephew a few days I think I, we, I think we did this on Friday and it's I had it set in the fridge we just dis, we decided to put it into some eggs since it was Easter Easter weekend but you don't necessarily have to what we did was um, just store it you can simply just store it in a Ziploc bag all right so I'm going to tell you how to make it first and then I, I'll share with you different ways that you can work with the um, with your own play-doh or work with Play-Doh, whether you've made it yourself or, or bought it. Um, I did post, a, I posted something last Friday, I believe, on how to make it. So at the end of this live today, what I'm going to do is go and copy that link and paste it in the comments below. So you have the full recipe printed there as well. So you don't have to, you know, constantly stop the video here in order to get the ingredients, etc. Let me tell you how to make it first. Play-Doh is very, very easy to make. Um, and there are a couple options on what you can put in afterwards. But like I said, they are completely th those ingredients are completely optional. Your basic ingredients you most likely have in your kitchen right now. You'll need two cups of flour, one cup of salt, and uh, about a cup of water. And what you're going to do is actually you also need a tablespoon of oil so you simply combine your flour and the salt get them all mixed up together add the tablespoon of oil start mixing that in and then gradually add the water you don't want to just pour everything in all at once you want to gradually add it start mixing it all together until you have a nice dough that is not sticking to your fingers or sticking to your hand so you may or may not use all the water um, if it is still stick if you find that it starts to stick to your hands just simply get some flour and sprinkle it over over the dough and then continue kneading again until it no longer sticks so very very basic basic play-doh two cups of flour one cup of salt uh, about a cup of water and a tablespoon of oil and I, like I said, I will post the recipe in the comments below so you have access to that as well. But let me go ahead and show you some of the ones that I made. Optional ingredients would be food coloring as well as um, essential oils. And I'll tell you the essential oils that I, I used in the ones that I made. And that way, if you do have some essential oils, you can certainly work with that. The food coloring is basically to add color to your uh, to your play-doh. And I went ahead and I had them stored in the plastic eggs as well as the Ziploc bag and yeah, we we ended up making four different colors. Very very easy to make. And 
we had it stored in the refrigerator as well so it's nice and cool but who doesn't like playing with play-doh right adults and children alike love playing with play-doh i know i do now this has this particular one has lavender in it i worked with two essential oils one was lavender the other one was a blend of an immunity blend that had cinnamon clove frankincense sweet orange and there's one more oil and i'll post those for you um but you can uh, add essential oils to it that way you have like an aromatherapy type of play-doh so not only do you have the the sensory but you also have that oh that nice aroma that's coming from it as well all right very very easy to make so like i said kids and adults love playing with this but what are the benefits of playing with play-doh well a very very simple one is just relaxation just to sit and just to squish it and feel it in between your fingers and this turned out really really well because you see it's not it's not sticking to my hand so the very very basic benefit of it is just simple relaxation just the whole act of squishing it between your fingers is enjoyable for both children and adults right let me show you some of the other ones what's another benefit of working with play-doh even the ones with the aromatherapy in them is anger management rather than you know yelling at someone or hitting someone let me go ahead and take this out this is the yellow I made a little bit more of the yellow let me just take out a little bit here so here's the yellow I dropped a piece. So anger management. Rather than yelling and screaming or hitting, you can simply just take the play-doh and you can you can punch the play-doh, you can take the play-doh and throw it against the wall. It's not going to mess up your walls. The 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 Food coloring is not going to come out of this. Another way of doing it is simply maybe drawing a picture. Let's just say that this particular child is ang angry about something. You could do it like a target symbol and draw, draw the target symbol, paste it on the wall and just have the child just take the, the Play-Doh and just slam it against the target symbol just to kind of, you know, get some of that anger and frustration out, right? But, let's see. I have to remember to talk simply because I'm sitting here playing with the Play-Doh. All right, so instead of bottling up that anger, you can simply have have the, the child use the, the Play-Doh in that manner just by, you know, posting. Maybe there's a, a particular picture. Maybe that, that child had a, a nightmare. And uh, one way that you can use utilize it is drawing the picture of the particular nightmare and... Uh, pasting it on the wall and then just having the child take the play-doh and just slam it against the against the particular image you could also use the play-doh have the child actually make uh if say, let's say that child dreamt of a particular um had a nightmare and there was a particular image in that child's head you could have the child make the the image out of the play-doh and then once that image is created have the child just take the that particular image and just start squishing it back together just a symbolism of you know it, it was just it's a nightmare and I'm gonna get rid of that particular monster symbolically right now you can always incorporate this into into um, counseling as well like uh, in ver verbally you know it doesn't necessarily have to just be with the play-doh this could be one of those um, modalities where it's incorporated into into other into other therapies but if you have a child that's non-verbal this is a great way to utilize play-doh um 
if that child is nonverbal, you could have the the particular child actually create scenes using the play-doh. So you could have um like a a little, a little acting um session if the child doesn't want to speak but you can have you know different colors of the play-doh and have the child actually build the scene out using the play-doh it doesn't have to be a complicated scene there's enough i'm sure the child can create enough uh, information in the play-doh so that you as the as the parent as the counselor the therapist can easily figure out what the child is trying to communicate especially if that child is nonverbal, right so those are just a, a few ways that you can incorporate the Play-Doh into, into your the parenting if you have a child that's nonverbal or if you're, you happen to be a therapist, that's another way. Now once, another simple way of, of um, incorporating Play-Doh is simply by drawing, get a blank sheet of paper, draw a face, but you're going to draw only the eyes and the nose because you leave the eyebrows your eyebrows your, your facial expressions tell a lot when you're angry your eyebrows do a certain thing your mouth does certain things so you can draw a face with just the eyes and the nose and then the the child or the adult it doesn't matter who's working with this can simply create the expression or the way that they're feeling out of the play-doh and draw and have it put onto the particular image that you're of the face that you're working with and that's another way especially for someone who is nonverbal, to kind of indicate how they're feeling at that time okay. now the um another way that you can work with with play-doh is by creating mandalas and i i think i did a video i'm not sure how how long ago it was but I will post the link and the mandala would simply be since you have especially if you make different colors that's the easier way to work to create a mandala is if you have different colors of the of the play-doh and you just roll out a slab of one particular color and then you use the other colors to create tiny little dots that you can place on um, on your mandala and I'll post the link for how to create a mandala and that way you can easily see how you can create a mandala using Play-Doh. Okay, so let me see. I wrote some notes. I want to make sure that I've said everything. Okay, so the like I said, the essential oils that I used in here, one of them was lavender, and lavender is very calming, it's very relaxing. So if you want to incorporate essential oils and you want them to be want your play-doh to be like a uh, for relaxation or to calm to calm one down then you want to use essential oils such as lavender um, even chamomile would also also work for the for the calming effects I have an immunity blend in here like I said so each time I work with the immunity blend I'm also getting some of the essential oils onto my hands and therefore it goes into my skin so you do not have to add essential oils to the play-doh that you make if you happen to have essential oils and you'd like to to add those in go ahead and experiment and see what you um what you can can come up with Th this is this is the pink this was actually red but it turned out to look more like pink let me go ahead and pull this one out like I said it's very very easy to make so easy and you don't have to make as much as I did. The the ex, the recipe that I gave you um, made, gosh, kind of hard to say, but these two fairly large eggs, this one, and you can see how big it is in my hand, the yellow, and then this other green one that I have here. So it does make quite a bit. So if you want to, you could easily have the recipe. And still get enough or you could simply double the recipe that I gave you if you want to make quite a bit this will last up to about four weeks kept in the refrigerator it is just salt and flour and oil and water so it will go bad um, without the essential oils it is edible but who wants to eat salty play-doh right if you do put the essential oils in um, 
you may want to just avoid try not to give it to young children who are going to put it into them you know taste it and stuff it's not going to hurt you but at the same time you don't want to get pure essential oils into your into your mouth so if you do work with the essential oils just avoid eating it but without the essential oils it is completely edible it's just a huge chunk of salty flour all right so I've given you a few benefits of working with the um, with play-doh uh, even or with the essential oils or without if you have any questions or you have any feedback please feel free to post them in the comment section below hi Morris how are you doing gosh it's been a while since I've seen you how are you doing I know it's kind of crazy up where you are huh but yeah if you um if you do make it I'd love to hear your feedback and if you already work with play-doh can you give me a couple ideas on how you work with it that sort of thing I'd love to hear how how people are utilizing the different um, activities that I'm sharing so I think that will be it for today oh I did want to share with you another recipe that you might want to experiment with if you don't want to do the play-doh same benefits but you might want to try something called cloud dough and it is actually five cups of flour to one cup of baby oil and you just mix that up it's very very similar to moon sand um, but it's using flour and baby oil so five cups of flour one cup of baby oil and I will also post that in the in the comment section below that recipe All right so I think that was it that was it um, for today if you do want to go back and check out the previous videos today is day 23 so you just simply put in the hashtag create with Gina and uh, it will pull up all of the videos that I've done for the last 22 days or the, the past 22 videos and I will be back here tomorrow at around the same time around one o'clock which is what I've been doing um, if anything changes I will let you know simply by posting something prior all right, so thank you for being here with me. Again, this is another episode of Create with Gina. And if you are looking for previous ones, hashtag Create with Gina. Thanks again for sharing this time with me, and I will see you all again tomorrow.